Thank you for joining us today. My name is Anna with the Rogue Community College Foundation. I'm the scholarship coordinator and we appreciate your interest in applying for scholarships to attend RCC during the 23-24 school year. The next few minutes, I'm just gonna give an overview, a tutorial on our scholarship program and scholarship universe, the mechanism for applying for scholarships. And I appreciate you being here. So let me start out by saying the RCC Foundation gives out about $500,000 to $800,000 a year in student scholarships. The money's real. The opportunities are real. Um, we administer about 150 different scholarships um, over the course of a, a single year. And we invite students to apply once and be considered for as many scholarships as they qualify for. Our goal is to award those who are eligible um, and those that we award get an average of between $1,000 and a maximum of $6,000. Last year in 22-23, we were able to give out about $800,000 and the average student received over 3,000. So it just depends on how many people apply and what your competition is. Um, but we do aim to make a significant difference in your ability to pay for college. We're hoping that scholarships will help you not have to rely on student loans as much or at all. And we're hoping that your part-time employment while you're a student is limited to really what you need instead of, so that you can focus on your studies. So the program that we use is called Scholarship Universe, and we invite anyone who has an RCC login credential, that means you do have to go through the admissions process um, at RCC, but once you have a student ID number and have the login credentials to get into your MyRogue account, then you use those same credentials to log in to Scholarship Universe. So I'm going to share my screen. And we will show you what I'm talking about. Uh, sorry, share. Okay, so I want to go to the main RCC homepage. This is roguecc.edu. And you'll notice this big ad from the RCC Foundation. It's scholarship season. Click here to learn more. If you click here, it'll take you to our main scholarship um, launch pad. We have scholarships for the current year 22-23 that are still being distributed. And we're going to focus today on scholarships for the 23-24 school year, uh, which is the second column over here. So you'll notice that it talks about who can apply for scholarships. And I want to cover those points right now. If you have an RCC credential, you're able to log in here and apply. If you have a GPA of at least 2.5, and I'll cover later which GPA we're asking you to report, but we are we can fund anyone with a 2.5 or greater. You also have to be returning to Rogue or coming to Rogue as of next year, starting with a 23 fall term, which begins in September of 23. Once you attend in fall, we're hoping that you continue in winter and spring. Scholarships that you're offered, that you're awarded, are dispersed to you. The money is given to you or to your RCC student account, dispersed over fall, winter, and spring terms. Um, if you are going to still be working on your high school diploma, still getting your GED during the 23-24 school year. This application process is not for you yet. I will catch you the next year. Um, but if you're going to be done with high school, done with your high school diploma, or having completed your GED by the application deadline of June 1, then we want you to apply. Okay, also, if you are going to be finit your current student at RCC finishing up your degree as of spring 23, and you're planning to transfer to either Oregon State University, Oregon Institute of Technology, Portland State University, or Southern Oregon University, so OSU, OIT, PSU, or SOU, as a fall term 23, then we offer you, not, we don't want you to apply for the general application cycle, but we do offer you the option of applying for a matriculation scholarship. That's where RCC provides a $500 scholarship and then it's matched by the university when you transfer there. So that's an, a separate application that we'll show you here. 
We also recommend um, that you, if you haven't done it yet, that you fill out your FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, for the 23-24 school year, or if you're not eligible to have a FAFSA processed, then you can do the Oregon Student Aid application as an alternative. Those applications opened back on 10-1 of 22, so they've been open for a while. So if you've already done it, you don't have to do it again, but we recommend that you do it. And why is that? That's because any scholarship that we offer that has a need-based component, we rely on the FAFSA or the ORSA information to let us know um, what your financial need is. So that's something that uh, we recommend that you do now as a parallel process to the scholarship application process. And then it says when to apply. <clears throat> the application for the 23-24 school year opened on February 1, and the deadline to apply is June 1. If you simply do the application by April 1, April Fool's Day, <laughs> then um, your name will be entered into a bonus drawing for a $500 early bird bonus um, amount. So that's just a uh, cherry on top. So we do recommend that you apply early. If you're applying for internal scholarships through the RCC Foundation, those are the deadlines. If you're using scholarships to also apply for external scholarships, that can be anything outside of the foundation, <clears throat> such as, you know, Coca-Cola Company or Walmart or, you know, those type of scholarships. Those um, scholarship opportunities are also housed within Scholarship Universe, um, and you can apply for those year round. And I'll show you how to manage those uh, in a few minutes. So what are you applying for? I already mentioned that we give away between five and $800,000 a year. Last year, um, one in two to three students who applied were awarded and their average award was over $3,000. So it just depends every year on how many people apply, how much money we have to give. Um, but the odds of getting a scholarship through us if you apply timely and do an, a, a careful application is pretty good. <clears throat> the external scholarships that are available, this is 13,000. It's actually up to almost 14,000 at this point. Um, and those are vetted scholarships, the ones that make promises they can't deliver on or, you know, are, are not um, viable for any reason. They don't make it. They don't make the cut. So they're not included in that $14,000, 14,000 scholarships. All righty. So how? You're going to log into Scholarship Universe by clicking this link or the Apply Now button. You use your RCC credentials, like I mentioned, to log in. There is a frequently asked questions here about those credentials. If you are having difficulty, you can check that out. And then when you log in, you're going to start by answering questions. And by answering questions, the system will learn who you are and be able to match you and your characteristics to the criteria that each scholarship requires. And therefore, you don't have to do the matching. You don't have to go find, you know, look for which scholarships you qualify for. We do that work for you or the system does that work for you. And we serve up the, the matching and then allow you to apply. So you apply for internal and external scholarships, and we communicate with you via your RCC email. So even if you're not a student yet, or it's during the break, and you're not you know, actively checking your email, you need to be actively checking your email. If you um, desire to forward your student email to your personal email for your convenience, you can do that, that's no problem. And if you end up needing help with your application, um, I'll show you my name and contact information in a minute, but also TRIO, Educational Opportunity Center staff are available to assist you. There's their phone number and their web page to schedule an appointment. This demo is going to be updated as soon as I finish this, and it'll be here for you to watch um, at your convenience. And then next... In 2324, we make award offers again via your student email. So be careful to watch that. Um, every offer that we make, you, we require that you submit a thank you letter 
to the donor for those funds and that thank you letter is then shared with the donor. It's um, wonderful to give money to student scholarships and then be able to see that your money is being used um, to help benefit students like you. So we share that and we also offer you and the donor an opportunity to meet. If you wanna meet over coffee and get to know each other a little bit, the foundation will um, uh, help to put that together for you. Okay, when you're offered uh, a scholarship, that scholarship is processed by the financial aid department here at Rogue. It's added to your award letter. And then when we disperse the money to you, it's dispersed to your RCC student account. That means that it first goes to pay your tuition, your fees, your institutional charges. And if there's money left over, when all your financial aid and your scholarships are combined together, then that refund is processed starting the end of the second week of each term. And we do that weekly. So whenever money hits your account, if it creates an excess, you'll get a refund um, that week. And we require that that refund be processed to a bank mobile account. So if you haven't heard of bank mobile, haven't set up that account yet, you'll want to do that. And Bank Mobile is a way for us to uh, to pay you, or you can designate a third party account that the money is forwarded to. If you get external scholarships, those external scholarships, the checks should be directed to Row Community College at this PO box in Portland for processing. So that covers this page. I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply Now, and when I do that, I'm going to be taken, sorry, I'm going to be taken to, let's just do it. I'm going to be taken to Scholarship Universe. Now, I've already logged in here, so it's not going to have me enter my credentials, but you, like I said, will enter, use your RCC credentials to log in. And then it's going to serve up what we call, oh, hold on just a second, I'm going to go to a student view. It's going to serve up what we call a, your student dashboard. So the dashboard is simply a way for you to navigate the system. And over here, you'll notice all the different um, tabs that you can go to. If you click on this, it'll, it'll minimize the tabs. And clicking on this ellipsis again will open up the tabs. Um, Scholarship Universe doesn't serve up a traditional application where you start it, you answer 15 questions, you end it and you're done. Um, what it does is it requires you to first navigate to questions and you can do that here. If I go to questions, it's gonna ask me questions and the more it learns about me, the better it's uh, able to match me to different scholarships. I've already answered a lot of questions in here. So whatever I've already answered, it serves up and gives me the opportunity to confirm or change my answers. If this question are either of your parents, a veteran or active duty member of the United States Armed Forces, if I said no and I thought, no, I answered that wrong, I need to answer it correctly, I can go to the pencil, that's my edit button and change my answer and then say return. And you'll notice that at this point that question is now answered yes. So once I review my questions and every time you log in, it's gonna have you do this. Every time you log in, you can review your answers and update them until you hit the final submit. And you'll also notice down here that it's serving up 10 questions per page. I can change that to 25 or 50 questions and therefore scroll through it a little bit easier. So that's your opportunity to answer. You'll notice up here, once you start answering questions, there will be an answer more questions. We internally have about 55 questions that we ask you, which sounds like a lot, but it goes really fast. So we encourage you to keep answering questions, spend at least 45 minutes an hour answering questions, and that'll give the system enough to be able to match you to different scholarships. Up here, based upon how I've answered, it's matched me to 164 scholarships worth up to $189,000. So if I navigate down to this next tab, scholarships, I can see those 164 scholarships, what they are. 
Now you'll notice that the first ones that serve up are the icon that they have here is um, university specific scholarships. So that means that these are through the RCC Foundation and all we, we've told the system to, to, to serve up our scholarships first, we're on the top. If you navigate down to other scholarships later on your list, you'll notice that these scholarships are external scholarships with the world icon here. External scholarships, if you click apply, it's going to warn you that you're leaving this website and you're going to that application website, which is completely separate. So we vet the application. We tell you about that external application in here, but to actually apply, you need to go to their site. So when you say apply and then say, okay, you're going to be um, navigated off of this site. And every external scholarship is a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning that you need to apply individually for each external scholarship. Whereas if I go back to the beginning, page one, two, three, and I get to the internal university specific scholarship, if I hit, this is normally apply, I've already been in here, so it's gonna continue, now it says continue application. If I hit the continue application, that means that I haven't, I've started it, but I haven't submitted yet. It's going to serve up a list of all the internal scholarships that I qualify for. So you'll see that based upon how I answered my questions, I qualify for a lot. So you can, if you want to not apply for something, you can deselect it and you won't be considered for that. I don't recommend that. I think you should keep them all um, selected. And then as you go down, um, it'll give you the opportunity again to review your answers, edit them as necessary. And when you get down here, it says I verify all information above is correct. If I mark that and say continue, I can navigate through the website via continue or you'll notice a sub tab of options pulled up. So your application at RCC, the internal one, we, we discuss requirements at first, and I really encourage you to read through this and be familiar with it. You might even want to print it out and keep it for your records. Um, you'll notice that it does tell you which GPA to report, um, and I'll go over that real in a minute here. Um, and then as you get, navigate down to each section, certain questions will serve up under that section. So academic, on the essay section, um, you'll notice that there's one, two, three questions, and this little red asterisk means that it's a required essay. We ask the same questions that OSAC, the state of Oregon, asked in their scholarship application process. Um, I've been told that they allow 1,900 characters. We only allow 1,000, so you might have to take essays that you wrote for their process and reduce them down. Um, but we do ask the same question. So at least you've, you know, if you did that application process, you've already been through the, the thought process to, to um, develop these essays. Anyway, we, we do put a lot of weight when we're scoring your application on these essays. And so we ask that you carefully take time to draft them, maybe outside in Word, don't draft them here. Draft them in Word, make sure that they're free of um, punctual uh, punctuation and spelling errors. Make sure that you've answered the question that was asked. We recommend that you get somebody else who's good at writing to maybe read it over and pr um, provide you some uh, helpful critique on whether or not you shown through. You know, this is your opportunity to set yourself apart to tell us a little bit about you that we wouldn't otherwise know. And so, um, also, if your language, your first language is not English, or if writing's hard to you, even in English, um, write it elsewhere, get some help. Maybe if it, English is not your first language, write it in your native language first and then get help translating it over to English. That usually uh, does better than trying to stumble through writing it out in English or even writing it on the fly here. So the questions that we asked real quick are your career goals and um, educational plans and career goals. What are they? What inspires you to achieve them? And then number two, what have you done for your family, school, or community that you care about and why? And number three, 
um, describe a personal accomplishment, an impactful change, or an experience that occurred in your life. What skills and strengths were needed to respond, and what did you learn about yourself? So all three questions are asking for data. We're asking for um, little snippets of your life that help us peer into see who the real you is. What is your character? What's your grit? What's your determination? How have you given back to your community? Um, that kind of th thing is what we're looking for. Okay, and then under academic transcripts, if I navigate down, <clears throat> This is where we talk about um, what transcripts we want you to uh, scan in and submit. Now, if you're a high school student working on your high school diploma, gonna graduate maybe in spring and then come to Rogue in the fall, we want you to give us your high school cumulative GPA that's most current. So if the fall term is finalized, which it probably is, <clears throat> then you'll want to include through fall. If you're in a quarter system and the winter term is done, you'll want to include through winter. If you are done with your high school diploma and you've completed at least 12 graded college credits, then we want your college GPA. At that point, we don't care about your high school anymore. <laughs> if you're a 52-year-old person who's coming back to school after some life experience and you have 18 college credits back, you know, years ago, we want those college credits. Um, if you don't have the 12 credits, then we want you to go back to high school. But if you have 12 college credits that are graded, we want that GPA. If you never got a high school GPA, but you did receive a GED score, then we give you uh, um, information on how to convert that GPA. ED score into a GPA, grade point average. So when you scan in your transcripts, <clears throat> if you have multiple pages on your transcript or even mul multiple transcripts, say you've been to three different colleges already, then we want you to put those um, academic transcripts. They don't have to be official. They can be um, unofficial. We want you to put them in chronological order and scan them in as a single multi-paged PDF. And you'll notice down here, file name, that you can go and name whatever file it is and load it in here. I just loaded a random page. Anyway, so transcripts um, and GPA information is here. We do require one letter of recommendation. We used to require two, and now we only require one. Um, so it needs to it needs to be a good one. You want it to be a good one. We're looking for a recommendation not from a family member or simply a friend. We know people love you and, and that's great, but we want someone who knows you in as official capacity as possible. What that means in our mind is someone who in the old days has letterhead that they could write you a recommendation on. So do they have a role in your life such as employer, a boss, a co-worker, a coach, a counselor, community leader, clergy, instructor, teacher. Um, that's ideas of who we're looking for to write that recommendation. We also, you know, somebody who can speak to your character, your grit, your involvement beyond yourself. You know, what do you, how do you spend your time? What do you care about? Somebody like that. Um, and also we're looking for somebody who knows you pretty recently. We don't want a high school teacher who knew you 10 years ago. We'd rather have somebody who knows you in the last year or two um, to write that recommendation if at all possible. If you don't have a current somebody, you can go back further. It doesn't completely um, bomb your score <laughs> in this area, but to, to score the best, we want someone who knows you well can speak to you holistically and or about you holistically and knows you pretty well recently. Okay, so what you do is you click on the add recommendation letter and then on the request, you name who it's gonna go to, what their email is, and then you can write them a personal message. Now we, we recommend that you talk to, you know, Coach Bill um, before you put his name in here so that he knows this is coming and you have his permission. He's agreed to do a recommendation for you. 
And once you do that, let him know kind of the time frame that you need it by. So put his name in here, his email address, and then, hey, Coach Bill, thanks for agreeing to do a recommendation for me. My application is due by June 1, but if you could get this done by the middle of May, that would be great, or whatever you want to say. Um, and you give them clues. Remember, I, I was on your team this year. Remember, I served in leadership this way. Remember, you know, remember, remind those people how you know them and kind of what you want them to highlight in the recommendation. Let them know that the recommendation is going to be taken seriously and is going to help you um, with your application. Alrighty, and so the deadline date, don't tell them June 1. Give them a date that's in advance of when you need this done. Because if for whatever reason they can't follow through and do this for you, you can then come in and you name somebody else and have it done by somebody else. Ultimately, it's your responsibility to make sure it gets done by the deadline. So use this deadline to personally manage the expectation of that person and, and to make sure it gets done for you. And then hit submit. So I'm going to cancel for now. The next section, agreements, we go through and require that you say yes to all of these. If you say no, it might create problems. And most of them, you'll understand why in a second here. You're certifying that the information is true. You understand to accept the scholarships. You're going to have to write a thank you letter. Um, you're giving us permission to use your information um, in uh, promotional material, et cetera, to share it with your donor, that kind of a thing. So once you say yes to all of those, you can continue. And when you hit continue, you're going to be in this review and submit. Now see these red exclamation points? Those are warnings to me that I haven't completed that section. So this application is not able to be submitted until it's complete. So in this case, I would want to go back and finish what I haven't done. When you're truly done, this review and submit is important for you to read through it carefully to make sure that all answers that are here um, hover over and it'll help you um, on these question marks, it'll help you with instructions, make sure your answer is clear and accurate, um, and make sure you don't have any of these required uh, buttons still warning you that it's not complete. When you're done, you're going to be, the submit button is going to be um, dark and <laughs> not grayed out, so you can hit submit. Now, I will warn you, when you submit, your application is done, which is a good thing, but it means you can't go back in. Say you submit it by April 1 to get part of, to be part of the drawing. You can't go back and change your answers after that. So make sure that you're intentional about when you submit because you can't change it. Um, the other thing I want you to know is once you submit, we add scholarships periodically. Um, so we're managing 119 that are active right now, but say... I have a new one that comes in next week. I might add a scholarship to this system. The system doesn't automatically match you to new scholarships. So we recommend that before the June 1 deadline, maybe the very last few days of May, you go back into this system and uh, resubmit your application. That's so that you can be matched to absolutely everything that's um live and offering scholarships as of the deadline of June 1. Okay, so that's where you do, do your application. Now, after you've done your application internally, you can na navigate back to this scholarship listing. And, okay, let me clarify <laughs> that when you do your application, when you submit your application, it's going to be for all these internal. So you do not have to do a second application for any of these internal. So after you submit, you're going to go then to your external, the world, scholarships, and oops, and start or keep applying for those. And like I said, the app apply button here takes you external and you have to apply one to one relationship. Now over here on awards, after we've made an award to you and you've ex done your thank you letter, um, you can see what awards you've been given historically here. And you have a My Doc section where if you um, scan in transcripts, you scan in 
maybe letter of recommendation. We, for our internal, do not accept physical letters of recommendation. You have to have your the system send the email to your person and then they're going to get online and do the uh, recommendation online. But if you have external documents that require recommendations, you might want to scan some hard copies of those in and use them and reuse them. So this is a place for you to house your documents that you can then pull up and just use. If you've done volunteer work, if you have a resume, um, anything like that can be scanned in here uh, for your benefit. All right, and then you're always welcome to provide uh, feedback on how the system works, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Um, and if you have any questions, um, remember that I'm available and TRIO is also avail available to help you with those. Okay, so that's how you navigate Scholarship Universe, and it'll keep this uh, measurement of kind of what what your scholar what your universe looks like, how many you qualify for, how many you've been matched to, how many applications you've done, and it's pretty pretty useful that way. So I hope those that's answered your questions. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any more questions, get a hold of us and we'd be happy to ask uh, to help. Also know that Trio and myself, we're offering several workshops um, throughout the next four months, February, March, April, and May. So, you know, watch, uh, keep your ears and eyes open. And if you want to join us for those, you're welcome to. Welcome back. I have a few bonus features to share with you that I realized I forgot to cover in the first one. So this is just a little add on a few tips. I'm going to share my screen. And give you a few other highlights. Um, back when we were looking at different scholarships that we qualified for, I want to show you a couple tips on how to manage those because the list can be long and overwhelming. First of all, when you look at a scholarship, if you click on it, if you click on it, hold on. Oh, view right here. If you click on view, um, it'll give you a thumbnail sketch of who is eligible for this scholarship. And the fact that you were matched to it, it'll tell you the different criteria. And as you answered questions, it'll show you what your answer was and how you how you met the matching criteria. So just a little uh, help. And if I go back to scholarships, maybe I um, am overwhelmed by the list of 100 and whatever, however many it was that I qualified for. So I can use this filter feature and if I click down, I can filter by different criteria. Maybe I want to focus on the scholarships that are due the most current and that are coming up in a few days or a week or two. I can sort by due date, relevancy, alpha, how hard they are. Maybe I want to apply for the really easy ones first, get those done. Or maybe I want to apply for the difficult ones because, you know, in advance early. So we automatically have the system defaulted to sort by school scholarships first, but again, you can manage them. If I go to Alpha, for an example, it'll sh um, sort those out for me. The other thing you can do is use this pin feature. If you are researching a scholarship and you think, gosh, I'm interested in that one. That sounds like a good match to me. I think I really want to apply for that one. You can pin it and therefore easily come back to it later, easily find it later. This is some statistics. If you click on that, it'll show you how many people have already applied for the scholarship and how many et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're trying to decide which scholarship to spend your time on applying for, and maybe both of them are worth, you know, the same amount, they're equal difficulty, they're due on the same date, you can come in here and maybe you want to apply for the one that fewer students have already applied for. So your competition is less. Um, that's just a way to manage that. If you end up going to um, 
a scholarship that you think, eh, no, I don't think that sounds like I'm interested in it. You can click the not interested and that'll hide it from you. You can always go back and find it later, but at least it will not serve up as your immediate view. So use those filters um, and help. And then um, as you as you apply and you want to view the scholarship, it will give you a thumbnail sketch on, on what it's looking for, the type of student it's looking to serve. So that should be helpful. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let you know that I'm going to go back <laughs> to our main page here. And I showed you where to find TRIO's information, but I didn't show you Oops, I didn't show you where my information was. So under this next steps, Anna Manley, Scholarship Coordinator, and my phone number and email are there. So if you need any follow-up help, um, feel free to get a hold of me. I'd love to help you. And if you represent a student group um, and you want me to come talk to your group, your class, your club, whatever it is, um, we're willing to do that. So hope this information was useful and have a great day. We wish you the best in your scholarship application process. Bye.